Hi, welcome to Mathematics with Tom. I am Tom, and today we're going to solve an exact differential equation. Before we do that, I want to just remember what we've learned or what we have, because we're going to need to reference these concepts. We said that if we have some function, I used x and y, this time we're going to use t. Maybe t is the independent variable, y is the dependent variable. And we said that, um, yeah, this just equals, we said this equals some constant. Now here's what was interesting. We said that if we took the derivative with respect to t of capital F of t and y, well, we said that this was equal to the partial of capital F with respect to t plus the partial of F with respect to y times dy dt, and all of that equals zero, okay? And here's the, here's the key. This is an exact equation if, if we take, now we, we're going to use some new notation, we're going to take the, another partial. So we also wrote it in the previous video, we wrote it as, this is the function g of t y plus f of t y dy dt equals zero. Now we have to test, is it exact? It's exact if, so it's exact, if the partial derivative of g with respect to y is equal the partial derivative of f with respect to t. If that's true, then we can solve this problem. If we can't, we need to, we'll probably have to solve it using an integrating factor. So let's see if we can do this. So here's my example. Here's our example. It is that we have this function, uh, dy dt equals 2yt minus 1 over y squared minus t squared. Okay, that's the problem that we're going to work on. Well, right now, this does not look like the right order. So let's, let's do this. Uh, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by y squared minus t squared. So now my problem is going to look like y squared minus t squared times dy dt is equal to 2yt minus 1. Oh, look at this. If I take this 2yt minus 1 and move it to the left-hand side, if I do that, then I, well, then I would clearly grab another color, but I would be at this point right here. That's what we want, so let's do that. So I'm going to rewrite this by moving that whole term over. So now I have, and I'm going to change the sign on it, so it's really going to become a 1 minus 2, 2yt plus y squared minus t squared dy dt equals 0. Okay, now this is where it gets interesting because look at what we know. We know that this, we can start with either of these, this problem will work. But what we know is, I'm going to start with f, and we know that this, we know that, we know that this, the function f, that we're calling f, came from taking the derivative with respect to y. So remember what we said, we said that if I take the derivative of capital F, with respect to y, well, that gives me f. So if I was to undo this, so if I wanted to figure out what f was, well, what I would do is I would take the integral of the partial of f with respect to y dy, and let's do the same thing on the other side. Well, what would I get? Then I would just get f is equal to this this integral this integral of f dy well we can figure out what that is so let's do that 
Well, we're going to start out then. So we're going to take f t y is going to equal the integral. And we're just going to use an indefinite integral. y squared minus t squared dy. OK, so y is our variable. So this is going to give me 1 third, 1 third y cubed minus t squared times y. Now, plus c. We want to write plus c. But think about this for a moment. If I take the derivative of this right-hand side, I need to get back to y squared minus t squared. But when I do that, I'm going to be taking the derivative with respect to y. So this constant would go away if it's a number. This constant would also go away if it's a function of t. So that is how the constant works. It has to account for both variables. Well, now what do we have? Well, now we look at g. Because remember, we said over here that the partial of f with respect to x, that gave me g. And then we can reintegrate g, and we'll have the entire function for f. So let's take this. So now the partial, so let's do this. So we're going to take the partial derivative with respect to x of what we just found, 1 third y cubed minus t squared y plus c of t. Well, when we take the derivative of that, that means x is now, we're taking with respect to x. So the first y, 1 third y cubed, it becomes 0. Then So this is going to become a minus 2 ty plus the derivative of c, I'm just going to write it c prime of t. But wait a minute, this has to equal g. But g, we know, g is over here. g is 1 minus 2yt. So we can set this equal to g. So in other words, we can say that minus 2 times t times y plus c prime of t has to equal g. 1 minus, 1 minus 2 times y times t. Oh, but look at that. There's a minus 2ty on both sides. Those cancel. So now I'm left with the problem of c prime of t is equal to 1. Well, now let's just take the integral of both sides. So the integral of c prime of t dt equals the integral of 1 dt. So in other words, we can say that c of t is equal to t plus some constant. This time that constant is just it's just a number. Well, now we've got we've solved our problem. Our problem now can be written as f of t comma y is equal to is equal to uh, what do we come up with? One third y cubed minus t squared y plus t, and now we already said that the function equals c, so essentially this capital C here is equal to this capital C. Or, or if you wanted, you could write it like this, and I'm going to erase it, but you could say plus, plus c has to equal some c, maybe c1, then you could combine it, it's just another c. So maybe you should probably see by now that the easiest way to deal with this is just equals c. OK, now I think we can finish this. And that is if we have an initial condition. So our initial condition is usually starts at 0. So this is 1 third y of 0 cubed minus, well, t squared, that's 0 squared, so that's going to be a 0, times y of 0, plus another 0. This is going to equal capital C, and there is our final answer. The f of t comma y is equal to 1 third y cubed minus, oops, 
minus t squared times y plus t equals one third y of zero cubed. Now, you'd think we could close here, right? And we, I really think it's about time to, but there's always one thing to keep in mind. There's always one thing to keep in mind. And that is, is if you were in a test or you wanted to know, just check your own work in general. Well, you can do that in differential equations. And you can do that very simply by taking the derivative and seeing what you get. So let's do that. Let's see if our answer is as we suspect. So now what I want to do is let's just take the derivative with respect to t of f of t y. So the derivative of 1 third y cubed, this is going to become 3 times a third. That's going to be a, a y squared times dy dt minus, now we're going to take the minus, I'll put it in parentheses, the derivative of the first is going to be 2t times y plus the first, that's t squared times the derivative of y, well that's dy dt plus plus 1 equals 0. Okay, we're going to regroup. Let's regroup this problem by by our like terms. So I'm going to take my terms without a dt, dy dt. So I pick up, I have a, um, what do we have here without a, oh yeah, I have a, I think I missed a sign. Oh, let's see. I have a, Oh, that's where that parentheses in the wrong spot. dy dt plus 1. There we go. So now look at what I have. I have a 1 minus 2ty. Put that in parentheses just for visual aid. Plus, I'm gonna, I have a y squared minus a t squared times dy dt equals zero. Oh, and we could move that, the, this, remember we called this our g term. This is we called g. We could move g to the other side. So this would be y squared minus t squared times dy dt equals, and then remember we have to change the sign so that'd be easier to write it as 2ty minus one. And then we would divide both sides. So we have dy dt is equal to 2 times t times y minus 1 over, over y squared minus t squared. And we are, our check worked. We are right back to where we started. And that's how we solve an exact differential equation. And one last piece is in order. And, and that is, as I said earlier, that some textbooks use M. We used a G, they use an M. Plus, and then we've written F. Some books will use an N. And then we have dy dx equals zero. I think this is the more correct way to write it, but oftentimes people will multiply through by the differentials, treating them like a fraction. So don't be surprised if you ever see the problem written as M dx plus n dy equals zero. In that case, you would divide everything by dx and then approach the problem just as we did today. I hope that helps, and thanks for watching.